Welcome to this week's edition of Hawk Talk. My name's Parker Robinson, joined by Seth Markirke. Um, and on the other side of me, another Blue Hawk senior. We met four of them last week, um, and a very special one with us today. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, where you're from. Uh, I'm Devin Loy from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Yeah, and, you know, came out to, you know, eastern Montana originally to play for Dawson. What was that experience like uh, at the JUCO level? Uh, you know, the JUCO level wasn't much of a shock, but Glendive, Montana was definitely a shock. <laughs> that was definitely a culture shock. Wasn't ready for that. Everyone told me to get ready for it, and I kind of brushed it off like, ah, it's not going to be as bad as you say. And then when I got there, I was like, oh, this, will be, this is going to be an interesting year. But luckily, I had, I had great roommates and a great team out there, and it ended up turning out to be one of, one of the best years I had. Yeah, definitely. You you came from Idaho, so you're used to the cold, but like you said, coming to that smaller community, um, you know, but coming over to Dickinson, you came along with some players and even a coach from Dawson. What was that experience like? That was, you know, that made all transitions easy. You know, when you, when I went to Glendive and I was with Jake and Tibbs, you know, they, we all clicked right away, so it made Glendive that much better. And then all it did was just transfer over here to Dickinson. And it was just a smooth transition. It was, yeah. you know, couldn't wish for anything better. Yeah. yeah, and then coming into Dickinson this year, you guys, a lot more continuity than that. You know, a lot of returners and some familiarity with the, with the program. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, you know, like we came back from the summer and, Everyone just kind of dabbed each other up real quick, said, hey, how you doing? And it was just like, you know, it was just like it was an extended weekend. Didn't see each other all weekend. <laughs> yeah. That was it. And, you know, and then we came here and said, we got one job to do. We got to grind. So, yeah, it, was just, it seems like you guys have, sorry, it seems like you guys have really clicked well across the whole season, you know, starting in the, the fall and then um, moving into that stretch of away games. And then now we came back for a few games. Talk about maybe the senior night weekend, you know, with Friday night and Saturday night. You know, it's... Uh, the senior weekend was fun, you know, having everyone's families out there and just being with the seniors, you know, that you've been with for the last two years. And, you know, you grow, like you guys said, you grow a friendship, you grow a brotherhood. You know, these guys, no matter where we go in life, we'll always have each other's backs no matter what. And, uh, you know, the weekend was didn't go as well as we wanted it to, but that's just some, it's just some internal stuff we got to work out. Not No one's fighting with each other, which is a good thing. It's just... Um, Guys aren't really just getting checked out. I think we're just getting comfortable because we've had a lot of success the last two years, and that's that's just, you know, that comes with success. You know, you get a little comfortable, you get a little cocky. Yeah. And, you know, I think I think these this rough little stretch we've had with these last two games, I think that's going to be better for us in the long run because, yeah. you know, we don't like that feeling of losing. And even when we won on Saturday, it wasn't a, the greatest feeling of a win because right. we knew it should have been – it shouldn't have been that close. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you were on the team last year, you know, co-regular season conference champs, lost in the conference championship. Does that drive you guys going ahead? Yeah, you know, because we know exactly what it takes to get there. We know what it takes, you know, to lose. But now we know, we also know what it takes to win. So mm -hmm. it's going to, that's pretty much everyone's motivation is we're not even, most of us don't even talk about like the conference championship. We just, we think in nationals. That's the talk. We just say nationals, 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 so that we just know that that's what we're shooting for. And we know that conference is just a step there. Yeah, yeah one big change from last year to this year was, you know, the coach change two yeah. weeks before the season. You know, how tough was that and how did that kind of bond you guys uh, early? It was, you know, at first everyone was, they weren't mad so much at Wetzel because, you know, it was an opportunity that, we look at if we were in Wetzel's shoes, we would all would have taken the same opportunity. Um, so we weren't mad at him for leaving. Um, it just kind of hit us like, well, we were all scared. We were now scared, like, gosh, new coach, new system might come in. We're not, we don't want to put in a new system. We all know what we're about to do. But luckily it was just a true blessing that Vaughn came in and he made the whole transition easy. And it's been, you know, he's, he's a younger coach. So he gets, you know, the player's mentality a little bit. Sometimes with the older coaches, they get, to coaching yeah and they, they've kind of forget about the player mentality of it yeah. so he's still in, in that young stage where he understands the players you know we need maybe we need a little more rest or we need a little, little more reps and yeah. so with Vaughn coming in it was a huge huge you know, blessing just to have him just pick up where we left off basically right. 
Yeah. I remember when he was interviewing and around, around that same time, you a multiple guys that said, you know, this is the guy we want. This is, I, I like this guy a lot. He, he clicks well with us. He, he, ma he makes us, he leads us really well. Um, and then you guys talked about how that situation bonded you guys as seniors, especially, but as a whole team. Um, and so I guess I'm wondering what, what has the senior, you know, feeling been like uh, from that moment? You know, how, how have you guys clicked? You talked about how, you know, you guys came back from summer and it was just this mentality. I'm gonna, we're going to go out, we're going to do whatever we have to do. Is that still yeah, you know, rolling through? Vaughn came in, you know, first practice and said, this isn't my team, it's your team. He said, even if I recruited everyone, it's your team, not my team. All I can do is help you. So that's one, when he said that first day, it was like, okay, you, you know, he wants it. He wants it for us. He doesn't want it for him. He's not out for his accolades. He's out for the team accolades. And so that bonded us right away. And then, like you said, you know, once, when the coach leaves, who else do we have to lean on? We don't have, we don't have a coach to mm -hmm. lean on right now. We have all we had was each other. So next thing you know, when we're just doing workouts and open gyms, everyone's texting each other like, hey, we got to get in because everyone else is practicing right now, but we don't have a coach. We can't, yeah. we can't fall behind. So right. that was, you know, that was the biggest thing. Just everyone was like, there's, we had nothing but each other. So all we had to do is that was, that was probably the best thing that could have happened for this team, especially with, you know, so little new guys, it's kind of hard to bring in just a couple new guys. When it's a whole new team, it's a little bit easier. Yeah. But with only a few new guys, sometimes it's hard for guys to click in right away. Yeah. But I think because of that, it made it a lot better. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned you came over from Dawson with Coach Tibbs. You know, how big of a role did he play in that kind of transition process? He was he was huge because we were actually rooting for him to get the head job at first. We were just like, no, you know what we want. You know the system that we've already played. So you take over. And he just he told us, you know, he said, it's not my time. It's not my opportunity. And we said, so we had to say, oh, OK. And then, but he said, I'm gonna still be here. I'm still with you guys. So Tibbs has been there every step of the way, you know, yeah. gives us snacks on the bus and, <laughs> you know, make sure we get the proper food that we want. And so Tibbs has just been, he's been behind the scenes guy that, you know, he's got the biggest heart. He cares about every guy as much as he can. He also calls some pretty questionable fouls on me in intramurals, but I'm not gonna say that. Well, <laughs> I'm just joking. Just, he <laughs> calls legit fouls on me. <laughs> um, you know, as far as the team, we've mentioned, you know, nine seniors, a lot of a lot of maturity on this team and a lot of composure. You know, we saw it in Jamestown, kind of fended off uh, a late run from them. And then this past Saturday against Dakota State, um, down six with a minute 15 left, came back, no problem, won it by a couple. Yeah. Um, you know, what's that mentality and composure like? You know, Ryan, who you guys had on last week, Ryan and I have talked about it a lot where uh, I think – Having so many seniors and, you know, having Marcus won a national championship in JUCO, Connors won a couple of JUCO conference champs, and I won a couple, I kind of won a couple in high school. It's like, I think what happens is, you know, we're just, that maturity steps in. Now, like, I don't know if people have noticed, but we're not the loudest team out there when we're warming up. It almost yeah. looks like sometimes we don't, we don't even care, but it's not because of that. It's just we're so focused on, yeah. we know what, exactly what to do. We got to come in here. We got to stomp everyone to the ground. and you guys are just everyone we always say everyone's just in our way yeah. they're that's all they are you're yeah. just in our way and we're just going to move you out the way yeah. so having you know nine seniors the composure is so nice because no like even on the bench i used to get way more butterflies and during close games but like the dakota just state game i was just more i was more relaxed saying like we got this like mm -hmm. some you know something something's going to change and right when carter hit that three and I, I knew it was like that's it that's all we needed yeah. we're done right there yeah. I mean, we're going to win yeah, and you guys, you know, put on the pressure defensively, um, saw a few turnovers. You know, how big is kind of everything you guys do improving on the defensive end especially? I mean, that's that's all it is. We just, as long as we keep that defense going, you know, no one's going to no one's gonna stop us from there. And that's, that's basically it. As long as we play 40 minutes of defense, you know, sometimes like, you know, Jamestown, we kind of let up when we had that 25-point lead. And, <laughs> Dakota State, you know, we got down a little bit, but one, we just got to make sure that defense stays tip top from buzzer to buzzer, and then yeah. it shouldn't, those close games won't be close anymore. Yeah, you know, we had a couple close games this weekend, so that should be enough to bring people out, you know, on this yeah. this next game against Jamestown. But what would be, you know, some advice or something you would do or say to people who are maybe on the fence or who don't know if they should come out on Thursday night? You know. We just have fun. Like, there's a lot of fun. You see guys, like I said, we're not the loudest team, but we're a lot of fun to watch because 
we are successful and no matter what you guys you're gonna see guys diving on the floor going hard 110 percent you're gonna see them shooting threes you're gonna see marcus get a couple dunks in there and it's just you know this is just fun basketball right now and the way the conference is coming down every we're number one everyone has a target on our back so if you don't if you're on the fence you want to come watch these teams try to take down number one mm -hmm. that's that should be the motivation right there and especially Jamestown they travel with a nice little fan base so it's going to be a good good atmosphere yeah you mentioned those Marcus dunks and I think on the sideline we can see it about five seconds before it happens <laughs> where you see his mentality going into it what's that like on the court when you see him wind up and uh, try to throw one down you know yeah it just gets exciting because it's one of those it's one of those momentum plays you know even when he misses it you know you get excited because you're like oh he's gonna get the next yeah. one now it's kind of like you know when I watch the NBA and I see Westbrook and you see him miss a dunk everyone's like he's gonna go get the next yeah. one so when I see Marcus wind up I get excited <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. it's a cool side yeah um, you know like you mentioned you guys have put yourself in the driver's seat in conference play you know, down the home stretch, you know, knowing that you control your own destiny in that sense, how important are these last few games? Extremely. Um, you know, the fact that this is the only home games we've had this second semester and it was the first time we've been home in a month that, you know, having playoffs at home, not having to travel like we had to do last year. We had the first two, but then we had to go to Bellevue for the conference. Yeah. That, that definitely takes a toll on you. Yeah. So having maybe a Bellevue come down to us would be, it's huge. Yeah. So these next few, these next the last five games that we got are gonna be extremely critical to really just seal in that home court advantage and make sure that we get, we get all those home games and make it to nationals. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of opportunities, hopefully into the postseason play to catch the DSU men's basketball team. Um, in closing, you know, last week your teammates came on, put you on blast. They put me um, on blast. All four of them voting you the worst dressed on the team. Yeah. Um, before we ask you the same <laughs> questions, would you like to defend yourself? You know, I'm going to defend everyone for sure. How I feel about fashion is, you know, whatever you like, wear it, rock it. I rock that bucket hat that they talk about. <laughs> I should have worn it today. I was debating it, but I was like, you know what, I'm just... I'm going to let it be. I'm not going to get too crazy, but no, let it. Mm -hmm. That bucket hat is awesome. I don't care what anyone says. I love that bucket hat. I get a lot back home in Idaho. I get a lot of compliments on that hat. <laughs> it's only sometimes in North Dakota, yeah, people kind of yeah. question it. Yeah, as a golfer, I can attest that the bucket hat keeps the sun off your yeah, face. Yeah, you know, yeah. you got to. When I'm out on the lake, you know, on the boat, put yeah, the bucket yeah. hat on. Exactly. I'm, I'm good. Don't get sunburned. You know, got some pale skin out here. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so, for you, Best dress, worst dress, we won't blame you if you call yourself either. I'm not, I'm not gonna say anyone's best dress on the team because like I said, you know, whatever your style is, that's your style. I know. Like what Wilson wears, I don't wear what Wilson wears, but he rocks it. But Wilson couldn't wear what I wear, and that's how I feel. Worst dress, I'm going with all four of them. Okay. Ryan, his girlfriend dresses him, so he doesn't, he doesn't even know. Oh boy. Keem, he gets like 45 minutes of sleep a week, so I can tell that, you know, sometimes his mind gets a little fuzzy, yeah. so he gets, he's a little delusional. Mm -hmm. I, it's all right. Terrell doesn't have a pair of matching clothes. I live with the man, so I know that. <laughs> and then Carter hasn't bought a piece of clothing since 2007. One, because wow. he's the same size, and two, because everyone just gives him hand-me-downs because they grow out of their clothes before he does. So, you know, wow. those four, they roasted me. I hope I got them back. Yeah, that's some, this is one. Some bold accusations. <laughs> all right. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, You'll be able to catch up with the either best dress, worst dress, whatever you think, men's basketball team over the next couple of weeks. Check out dsubluehawks.com as that North Star, North Star Athletic Association Conference uh, schedule unveils. Um, and then we'll be back talking a little more about DSU athletics. Welcome back to Hawk Talk. It was nice having Devin on. Yeah. Really nice weekend this past weekend. Um, you know, celebrating Janae Moore, all that mm -hmm. she did. 
you know, reflect on that night a little bit. Yeah, it was it was great to have her family there, you know, have all the fans there. It seemed like they had that whole section over there in the bleachers. Um, but to just be able to honor her family, honor her teammates who, you know, um, played with her, uh, it was just an incredible night to see celebration um, from something that wasn't so celebratory for them. Yeah, absolutely. And having Karen Hopkins at the foundation post game, you know, talk about yeah. what that scholarship means and how it's impacted her life. Um, a powerful story there. Powerful story. Um, definitely. And so good work there by the foundation, DSU athletic department. Yeah, women's um, volleyball. Women, yeah, everyone that TR program, everyone that had anything to do with that. Yeah. It was a great night um, and hopefully a continual event going forward. Um, a lot of basketball coming up. You're a member of a coaching staff on a local basketball yeah, team. Local basketball. You know, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I coach eighth grade, um, the B team. We got B1 and B2. As I mentioned last week, gave a little shout out to the boys. Uh, you know, it's been fun. I coached them last year as seventh graders, and they were, um, I think m most of them, it was their first year. So some of them have a year under their belt. But uh, to get some coaching experience has been really cool, and to just be an encouragement and be a a light for some kids who maybe haven't ever played basketball or haven't done sports, haven't participated as a team is really, really fun. Yeah, and you know, we talk about it all the time with student athletes, with coaches. It seems like every everywhere you look, there's a student athlete giving back to this community, giving back to DSU, giving back to the high schools, middle schools, whatever it may be. Um, you know, how, from your point of view, what's that connection with the community like amongst the athletic department? Uh, it's a, an extremely, you know, great, great uh, connection. It's a vital connection, I think. I believe that um, wholeheartedly because the community is who supports us. You know, they come to our games. They um, help fund some of our pro programs, help fund some of the events that we put on. Um, so to be able to give back and, you know, we have the, the days in, in the uh, Rent-A-Hawk in the spring where, you know, the football team goes out and does yard work or does you know things for the community to have those days where we we can give back to the community or help you know teach some kids how to play basketball is really really vital too yeah and I think that that relationship goes both ways and it's it's definitely been you know powerful to get to know the people of the community yeah. get to know the things um, you know athletic scholarships brought both you and I to DSU but I think it goes so much far beyond what you do in your sport, what you do mm -hmm. at school, and really impacts this community, would you say yeah. the same? Yeah, I would agree with that. It's, it's you know, you come to DSU, you kind of just thinking, okay, I'm at Dickinson, I'm at Dickinson State, and it's its own community, but then you, you over the years, you kind of learn more people, or you meet more people outside the community who have supported you, who come to the games, and they, they know your name, you don't really know who they are at first, but then you get to know them, and I think, yeah, it goes both ways, like you talked about. Absolutely, and so coming up this next week, starting February February eighth through the eighteenth, we got Give to DSU yep. Week, um, an opportunity for to get to know about the DSU Heritage Foundation and get to know what their different funds go to and try to support the students of DSU. Yep. Um, with that coming up, what has you know that scholarship meant to you and allowed you to expand? Yeah. Athletic scholarship for football and then also the TR scholarship have both been you know, incredible for me to, to not really have to pay as much as I probably would have um, for school, which would have meant I had to work during, you know, when I, when I, between classes or, you know, at night when I should be studying or at a sport, you know, practicing. So to have a scholarship is just an incredible feeling to know that people support me and want me here, um, but then also enjoy, you know, the things that I bring to the table. Yeah, absolutely. I, for myself, it's definitely given me the opportunity to go out, do practical experiences like Hawk Talk, yeah. do different things. Um, and I think for most students, that's that's the biggest part of it. Relieve some of that stress of, yeah. like you said, not having to work, whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, and so give to DSU week 8th through the 18th of February yeah. um, will be kind of recognition of that and hopefully to continue the efforts of the DSU Heritage Foundation, the Blue Feather Athletic Association, everything that they do. Um, another event coming up this Friday night, so if you're watching this, there's very little tickets left for the DSU Blue Hawks base, baseball and softball uh, crab feed, um, so a really special event for them, raising money for going to Arizona and getting some of these spring games yeah. in that they otherwise wouldn't have. Um, and so you can contact Kristen Flurry at 
two five six seven um, and she can hook you up with the tickets for that. You get a nice glass with a blue hawk on it. Yeah. Um, so it's gonna be a great night. Yeah, seventy five dollars for that. Um, like I said, contributing to all that they do. Wrestling wrapped up their home schedule. They're on the road for the remainder yes, of the yep. season. So you can catch all of that on dsubluehawks.com. Uh, track and field this weekend in, in DSU, yep. um, in South Dakota State and Conference. We're really moving along fast yeah. in this semester. Yeah. Um, looking forward. Um, you know, how do you see the, the men's basketball season running down here? Men's basketball, man. I'm excited to see how, how they play out. They had a, you know, a, a tough one like Devin had talked about this weekend. You know, the first on Friday night, they didn't, they fell. You know, it, it, we didn't know how they'd bounce back. And then yeah. Saturday they bounced back, um, fought through. And so it'll be interesting to see how they how they finish the rest of the season with four. They have four away games, correct? Yeah. yeah. And so they got four away, and it'll be interesting to see how they deal with those. But I, th I think they're going to handle it well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Marcus White nearing 1,000 points. I think he's over 930 now in a two-year career. That's Incredible. that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely keep a watch on that. DSUBlueHawks.com for all in that. The men's basketball team's guaranteed a home playoff game, at least for the first round. Yep. So, you know, plenty of basketball left yeah. this spring. We hope to see you there at Scott Gym. Until next week, Hawks are up.